Like many inventions, the cardboard box was born by sheer accident. In the 1870s, an American printer by the name of Robert Gare stumbled upon the idea. By mistake, he cut a paper seed bag he was creasing with a metal ruler. Gare concluded he could create a sturdier container with paperboard. Cardboard boxes come in a wide variety of sizes, shapes, and colors, but most share three basic structural components. One wavy sheet of paper called a flute, sandwiched between two flat sheets called liners. Together, they form what's called a corrugated board. Production starts with a massive roll of partially recycled paper. The width of the paper varies depending on the size of the boxes they're making. The roll feeds a machine called a corrugator. The machine presses the paper between two ridged rollers and blasts it with hot steam. This shapes the waves of the flute. Another roller applies glue to one side of the flute. The glue's main ingredients are water and starch, which won't contaminate fresh produce the boxes may later contain. Next, the machine adheres one liner sheet. And then the other. The waves create an air cushion between the flute and the liner, strengthening the board. For added strength, some boxes have a double lining, two flutes and three liners. The flutes may also vary in thickness for more or less cushioning. The factory uses partially recycled paper for the flutes because it's more malleable than non-recycled paper. A razor-thin circular saw trims each side. The corrugator machine then cuts the board up to nine times, depending on the size of the box they're producing. The corrugator's final function is to separate the boards into layers using flexible aluminum tongs called fingers. Workers do a quality control check before sending the boards off for printing. The next machine stacks the boards into piles of between 25 and 80, depending on their thickness. This machine also feeds one board at a time to the upcoming equipment. It does this at lightning speed, at a rate of up to 8,000 boards per hour. First, the trimmer perforates the boards to create flaps and handles. Rubber sponges cushion the blades so that they cut only the parts they're supposed to. During the trimming, a press condenses the box's overlapping panels to level out their thickness. Workers usually cut the sponges by hand to make sure they fit snugly around the blades. The trimmer runs at a speed of 5 miles an hour, processing up to 90 boxes per minute. Workers send the cutoffs back to the paper mill to be recycled as many as six times over. A folding machine now bends them along score lines the corrugator made earlier. It then applies cold glue to the sections that'll join together to form the box. Hot glue of the cardboard is wax coated. The next machine folds over the glued sections. They aren't visible once the box is finished. Another machine stacks the boxes in piles. A separator arm moves the bundles to trays called skids for shipping. The printing of the boxes began in the factory's ink kitchen. A computer-guided dispenser squirts out different shades of ink following a precise recipe to create a particular color, one of 5,000 in the palette. One pail holds about 45 pounds of printing ink enough for 2,000 boxes depending on the coverage needed. The factory uses water-based ink because it dries instantly. The printing press applies the ink to the boards, one color group at a time, through four consecutive stations. This factory uses a flexographic printing system, a process that can print drawings and illustrations. Some companies use a lithographic press, which can also print photographs. Back on the trimming line, more complicated types of box flaps and handles require what's called a flatbed trimmer. It holds the boards in place with suction while making intricate perforations. After removing the trim bits, workers give the boxes one last quality check. Then they stack them and send them off to the warehouse.